Oh, this is a decent battery charger. This is sitting right now at 12.7 uh, volts. You can use one of these $1.99 char um, testers too, check the voltage. But um, this battery charger is not too bad. It's actually a, a desulfator. I had a couple of these actually. It's the second one I had. But what I'm going to do is use a load tester on the battery because um, I really don't know if they're good or not, to tell you the truth. And, um, you know, if you take this is a pretty good charger because of, um, and you know, one thing, when this thing is like about 12.2 volts, a lot of people put that, look at that resting, and they'll think, well, they think, oh, it's 12 volts. Now, actually, a fully charged battery is around 12.7 volts, and, but you still don't know what it's going to do under load, and, um, 12.2 volts, actually, if you got to rest, that's enough to start a car, but that's about half half discharge, so just for your information. Okay, so the battery's hooked up, and, you know, this actually has a meter on it, too. It says um, about 12, 12.5 volts, 12.7 volts. So basically, all you got to do is it's a switch. You just turn it on for 10 seconds, and, you know, you got your clips on there. This load tester was only 30 bucks, had a high rating on it, so... I'm going to give it a shot and see what it does because this battery's been in there since 2008. And you can see it's a Group 27 Max from um, Walmart. Cold cranking amps is uh, 750. Um, it's a really actually a powerful battery, but if it's not up to par, I'm going to restore it. You know, if it's not up to par a little late on that, uh, in a couple days here. You just count off about 10 seconds. Actually, it looks pretty damn good. Looks pretty damn good. So you can see, you know, you can see what happened. Actually, some smoke was burning off of here because this thing is brand new. That's all that is, is some resistors. So it looks like it's actually pretty good. So that's pretty damn, uh, tells you something about keeping a battery charger on a car or whatever because, uh, <laughs> This thing is actually pretty old. Yeah, actually, here it is. March 2008. So that is over five years old. And, but it keeps charged. So I'm going to do another one here. And um, it's a battery that's about that old, too. And uh, see how it works out. And this battery is from 2007. This fits in my convertible Sebring, uh, Chrysler Sebring convertible. And it also happens to be the same exact battery for the um, Chevy Cavalier, which is a natural gas and regular gasoline car, except I can't get natural gas in Florida. It's got a full charge from a solar charger that's <laughs> sitting on it. Um, you know, it's amazing how you, if you take care of something. So if you just hold this on for about 10 seconds. This one is actually slightly weak, borderline, borderline. Not bad though, not too bad. And actually, uh, this is a uh, from 2007, so that's a six. Actually, it's over a little over six years old. So that tells you something <laughs> about maintenance. But uh, there'll be a trick I'm going to be doing on a future video about washing, uh, fixing these batteries up. But a lot of times, um, if you use a... See, this other thing is, too, you got to consider this. This is a standard load tester. You know, I'm, st I'm putting this load on here on a 550 cranking amp battery. See, that's another way you can kind of tell it's um, not a perfect test. Because it's the same load going on a 5, 550 cranking uh, cranking battery. This is a much smaller battery. The other one was a 750, which is a Group 27. It's a huge battery. It's uh, it's not even for that Chevy. It's for like a, I don't know what the hell it's for. It's some of the old Ford trucks and stuff. So that's one of the reasons the load tester shows up good too. This would actually probably work fine on a um, four-cylinder Chevy or a small V6 in a uh, Chrysler, no problem with a lot of reliability. Um, but both of them actually, but six six years old and five years old on the batteries, and they're still good. But there's gonna be ways I'm gonna actually bring this up and uh, show that these things even have more power. 
This is a battery from the late 1990s. It's, it's been starting the Jeep for I don't know how long, since the late, late 1990s. Uh, uh, 1997 or 1998. Um, I have it on this special desulfator, and sometimes that's what I put it on. So I'm going to hook this up to the um, load tester. And uh, to tell you the truth, I'll be surprised if this passes the test because first off, it's a very small battery. See, that's the other thing you got to figure with these load testers. If you're testing this thing on a giant battery, it's this is a cheaper load tester, so it's not like variable load, you know. So I mean, this is a 1300 cc engine, so you don't know, see it's got a full charge. So I mean, when this thing cranks over, it's not going to be taking the same load as a 350 Chevy. Uh, V8, you know, so keep that in mind. So we'll see what happens here. And that's a little worse than I thought, but you have to remember this does start this car no problem. This is a four cylinder car, so it's also a very small battery. But I'm going to actually, uh, in a future video, see if I can get even higher results in this by doing some things to these batteries. But it's still, it's still holding a pretty good you know it's still pretty good it's still not too bad you just got to consider it's a pretty small battery so see that's the other thing you got to figure with these gauges because this is not going to draw that many amps as the 350 Chevy so when it says bad and you're looking at a small battery to start with you know the starter's not going to draw that many amps for a 1.3 liter engine and um, so in actuality but it actually does start this car this Jeep no problem at all even if I have to use it a lot because uh, the fuel ran out in it or something like that you know I have to crank it over crank it over crank it over but I'm gonna actually try to bring these up further to uh, get them to uh, more like new so if I ever get this off of here but anyway just want to say that this gizmo is like 30 bucks it's probably a good thing to have you want to check your batteries before the winter or if you want to make sure you don't get stranded someplace uh, because I found out you know <laughs> you're driving along you're driving along every time I had a batter a, well I had it happen in the last few years twice um, the battery seemed like it was fine it was fine it was fine it was an older battery and I wound up calling uh, one time I called AAA, uh, got a jump, and the other time I happened to be in front of Advanced Auto, and uh, I swapped it out right there. So, but you know, if I was someplace else, I probably would have been screwed. So it's good to have this tester for 30 bucks. It ain't bad.